It is good for us to be here. And we thank Almighty God just one more time for allowing us the glorious privilege to be gathered out there in Facebook land, on the prayer line, in this building. Uh, we bless the name of God. And, and I want to just say something as it relates to the psalmist uh, based on partner, partnering with him personally when he says in Psalm 34, verses 1 and 2, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then we want to partner with him publicly. For he says in verse number three, O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. That's why we're here, praise God, to worship Almighty God through Jesus Christ, the Lord by way of God, the Holy Spirit. We welcome you to the Missouri City Church of Christ virtual worship service. I'm Brother Richard Washington. In order of services or as follows, the opening prayer will be done by Brother Monte Cuba. Our song service will be rendered by Brother Austin Wilson. Communion and offering will be done by Deacon Brother David Broussard. The sermon will be communicated by our gifted man of God, whom we are blessed to have here. Working with this congregation, Brother Michael Williams, the invitation will be uttered by our elder, Brother Terry Watson, closing remarks by our elder, Brother Victor Scott, and then the closing prayer will be done by our elder, Brother Al Collins. It is a blessing to have you to tune in to us. And we pray always, don't miss the message, because there's a teacher behind the teacher. That being God, the Holy Spirit, don't miss what he has to say through the messenger. May God bless you, and may God keep you. Thank you. God is good. All the time and all the time, our God is good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here we are once again, approaching your throne of mercy. Father, before we ask you for anything, Father, we want to thank you for everything. Father, we want to first of all thank you for Jesus who found it not robbery to come and doubt on the sin cursed word for the remission of our sins. Father, we thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning to be able to praise in your holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our jobs. We, we just thank you for life, Father. Father, we thank you for, for just being who you are. But, Father, we ask that you continue to just be with us and be, to us, be with us at, in our everyday journey, Father, to, to be more Christian-like, Father, and to be our brother's keeper, Father. Father, as we go through this service, Father, we just ask that you, can, you be with us, be with our spirit, be with our minds, Father, and help us to remember that we're here to glorify you, Father, and edify each other. And, Father, we just ask that there be a word from, from, the, from you, Father, from, the, from our Man, certain Father, that it'll be someone to be called to say, what must I do to be saved, Father? And for God, Father, as we go through the rest of this service, we ask that you be with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning, good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. To sing and praise him and worship him. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> show, show me 
show me the way lord show me the way just show show me show me the way Show us the way, amen. <clears throat> Let's sing Only You Are Holy. Only You Are Holy. So, this is one that you guys may, may not have heard at home. This is one that, uh, you know, we want to introduce to you guys as soon as we all get together again. Only You Are Holy. <clears throat> Only You Are Holy. Only You are worthy, Lord. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. Only you are wonderful. Yes, you are, Lord. For there's no so true, ever so true, and all my love, my heart, my life is a testimony, it's a testimony, Lord, 
is a testimony. Only you are holy, Lord. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy, Lord. Only you are Wonderful, only you are one. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. For, for there's no one else like you. Oh, and who is faithful? Who is faithful? Ever so true, ever so true. Oh, my love. It's a testimony. It's a testimony, Lord. It's a testimony. It's a testimony. It's a testimony. It's a testimony, Lord. It's a testimony. We're here for no other reason to, than to praise his name, amen? When we worship, we have an audience of one, amen? And that's the Father, and that's the Son, and that's the Holy Ghost in heaven, amen? As we, get, we prepare our hearts and minds for offering and communion, we'll sing, Jesus rose, Jesus rose. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Oh, Jesus rose with all power in his hand. And it's said, oh, and they tell me that he died on a Friday. But I'm glad my Jesus rose on a Sunday morning. My Jesus rose. Jesus rose with all power in his hand, in his hand. Oh, when they tell me that he died on a Friday, but I'm glad my Jesus rose on a Sunday morning. He rose. Make you want to truly 
worship God. Thank him for being our God. Our communion will be coming from Acts 20 and 7. The Bible reads, upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29 read, For I have received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he were betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread. Our Father and God in heaven, we come with our head bowed and our heart lifted up to thee. Thank you, kind master, for coming down from heaven's glory and laying down your life for a friend. And what a friend we have in Jesus. Lord, we love you for you loved us first. You showed, you not even spoke love, but you showed love. And for this we say, thank you, Lord. And after the same manner also he took the cup, we had sub saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation unto himself, not discerning the lost body. Let us pray for the cup. Once again, kind master, we come thanking you for that precious blood that you shed on Calvary's cross. The blood that covered the multitude of our sins, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being so loving, so kind, for shedding that blood on Calvary's cross for us. It's in your darling son Jesus' name we dumbly pray. Let us all say amen. amen. At this time, let us take the Lord's Supper. Now at this time, it's set aside for offering to give back a portion of that in which the Lord had blessed us with. We'll be coming out of NIV, Luke 16, 10 through 13. And the Bible reads, whoever can be trusted with very little also can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. At this time, there's three ways for us to give. There's, number one is online, which is the preferred way. The link is on our website. Number two is text. Text a dollar amount at 281-767-8611 and follow the instructions. And the third way is, is to mail to Missouri City Church of Christ, P.O. Box 924, Missouri City, Texas, zip code 77459. Thank you. When we reach that city of the New Jerusalem, we will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah by and by. Oh, now how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn. We will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah by and by. Don't you know, oh, what joy.
Oh, what joy when we get home. Well, we're going to rest beneath, rest beneath that cloudless storm. Don't you know? In that land, in that land where saints never die. Now we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. sing about being in glory one day beside that crystal stream yes, I don't know what's wrong all right I don't know if you can't sing if you, if you can't get happy about that yes. I don't know what to tell you y'all mm. one day yeah because one day mm. I'm praying that that's a reality for me y'all yeah. right. yeah. amen amen one day all day long, y'all. Yes, That's all. We're going to praise him all day long. Yes, sir. Praise him. Singing around the throne. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing, I shall wear a golden crown. <clears throat> Before Brother Williams comes forth, I shall wear a golden crown. <clears throat> Amen. I shall wear a crown, don't you know that? I shall wear a crown when the trumpet sounds. When the trumpet sounds. Oh, I shall wear a crown, don't you know that? I shall wear a crown, and don't you know that? I shall wear a gold crown. 
shall wear a crown. Don't you know that I shall wear a crown when the trumpet sounds? When the trumpet sounds, oh, I shall wear a crown. Don't you know that I shall wear a crown? Don't you know that I shall wear a golden crown? I shall wear 
place amen yeah. 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 <clears throat> let's spirit is moving <clears throat> yeah. I woke up this morning with my mind you know it was a stay on Jesus well I woke up this morning with my mind you know it was a stay on the Lord well I woke up this morning with my mind on the Lord, uh, understanding that it was nobody but God that woke you up this morning. 
And so every time you wake up in the morning, the first one you ought to think about is Almighty God, knowing that if it had not been for him touching you with the finger of his love, you would not be here this morning. I, I want to suggest to somebody this morning that it was not your alarm clock that woke you up, but it was Almighty God. And as the old preachers used to say, if you believe it was your alarm clock that woke you up, let's test that theory and let's take that same alarm clock out to the graveyard and let's see how many people get up in that graveyard. The reason that you got up this morning is because God woke you up. And some Somebody ought to say thank you Lord for thinking enough of me this morning to wake me up and not only did you wake me up God but you clothed me in my right mind <laughs> amen and so we ought to be grateful every time God wakes us up every time God does something for us we ought to be grateful and that's why there ought to be praise on your lips for the Lord <laughs> And I want to suggest to you this morning that you don't have to be in this physical building to praise the Lord. Just where you are, you ought to have praise on your lips for what the Lord has done for you. Whether you're sitting on your couch, whether you're sitting on a chair, whether you're laying in bed, you ought to worship God this morning in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so we just praise God for God blessing us and giving us another opportunity to be in his house and to worship wherever you are. Amen. We are appreciative, Brother Wilson, uh, for doing an outstanding job. And leading us in our song service. And then we appreciate those uh, that have followed along and helped out. Uh, with the service this morning and those uh, that had other parts uh, in uh, the worship service. We're going to go to Genesis 37 and continue on with this uh, series of lessons. And while we go there, we'll do Jesus, how I love calling your name. It's been a little while uh, since we've done that one and we'll do that this morning. Jesus, how I love calling your name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, how I love, how I love, I love to call your name. Oh, and I called him Jesus, Jesus, oh, my Jesus. Said every day, Lord, every day. Oh, Lord, your, your name, name is woman. I called him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Jesus. Said how I love. How I love. I love to call him woman. I called him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Said every day, Lord, every day, oh Lord, your name, name is woe and a trouble around me, Lord. I didn't have to despair, Lord. You told me that you'll always be right there. Oh, it seems like my problems they had just begun oh and when i needed the lord yes they were already the one said i called him jesus jesus oh my jesus jesus said how i love how i love i love to call him oh and i called him jesus jesus oh my Said every day, Lord, every day. Oh, Lord, your, your name, name is woe oh, and oh, Have you ever lost someone that was so close to you? Death, it hurt you so bad till you didn't know what to do. 
Oh, you caught on the Savior, tears streaming from your eyes. Yes, and when I needed the Lord, yes, he was right by my side. Said I called him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Jesus. Said how I love. How I love. I love to call. Him. Yes, said I called him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Jesus. Said every day, Lord. Every day. Oh, Lord, your name is. Oh, and ooh, ooh, have you ever lost someone that was so close to you? Death, it hurt you so bad till you didn't know what to do. Oh, you caught on the Savior, tears streaming from your eyes. Yes, and when I needed the Lord, Yes, he was right by my side. Said I called him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Jesus. Said how I love. How I love. I love to call. Him. Yes, said I called him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Jesus. Said every day. Him, Jesus. Jesus, oh my Jesus, Jesus, said how I love, how I love, how I love, yes, said I called him Jesus, Jesus, oh my Jesus, Jesus, said every day, Lord, every day, oh Lord, your name is the same. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis 37 and verse number 5. I decided to continue on uh, with this lesson because so many uh, requested that we continue with this series. <laughs> uh, I was going to end it but uh, because of the request to go on and continue and the Holy Spirit working, we're going to continue uh, this series of lessons. Uh, Genesis 37 and verse number 5, the Bible says, Now Joseph had a dream. And we'll stop right there. Now Joseph had a dream and we've been dealing with this this year realizing the dream and this is part four realizing the dream and I pray that these series of lessons have truly been helpful and beneficial to the church uh, the emphasis of this series, realizing the dream and this thing that we have for this year is to help strengthen us spiritually for the journey before us. It is to focus, it is the focus rather of us not giving up especially when it comes to the spiritual man. Many times throughout the year, you start off with high hopes of trying to be more spiritual. But by month two, really by week two, the dream is over. <laughs> and what I'm trying to show you and encourage you to do is to keep on pushing. When, when you go through the pits of life, I'm trying to encourage you to keep on dreaming, to keep on pushing, 
to keep on striving to be the best you, but most importantly, keep striving to be not just the best you, but the best spiritual you that you can be. And so for the most part of this year, we've been focusing on our theme for the year in these last few sermonic castles, realizing the dream, taking a careful look at the life of Joseph. We've covered uh, so much material in this series of lessons that I don't have time to go through all of what we've covered already, but I will highlight uh, the areas that will bring us to where we are this morning. Uh, as most of you know that have been following along with this series, you know, Joseph was a young 17-year-old boy who was favored by his daddy, Jacob, because Rachel, which was the wife that Jacob loved, bore Joseph in their old age. Joseph, Jacob rather, chose Joseph to be the one to receive the birthright and gave his son a coat of many colors, which was a symbol of position. And because of Jacob's favoritism towards Joseph, I told you that Joseph's brothers took their father's favoritism uh, out on Joseph because they did not like the fact that Joseph was getting special attention that we're not getting. And then on top of that, I told you that Joseph had the audacity, had the nerve, the unmitigated goal to have a dream and to tell his brothers his dream in chapter 37, verse number 7, which was basically that one day, I'm going to rule over all of y'all. <laughs> and each one of y'all are going to bow down to me as your leader. And because of Joseph's dream, his brothers got angry and developed hatred towards Joseph. And they wanted to kill Joseph simply because he was a dreamer. And I need to pause in the prelude to say this because I did not get to say all of this last time. But I think it's good to say, and that is, you've got to surround yourself with people that dream big just like you. Let, let, let me tell you something, church. You, you need to stop telling your big dreams to small-minded people. They can't handle your dreams. Tell your big dreams to people that also have big dreams. And I need to stress this point again. I said it a couple of weeks ago when we were in this lesson. But I need to stress it again because perhaps somebody missed it. And somebody just needs this, this reassurance in your life this morning. And that is that dreamers can't hang around those that are nightmares. Because dreamers tend to only have positive stuff going on in their lives while nightmares are full of negative stuff. Dreamers wake up peacefully. Nightmares wake up with a bunch of negative news, distress, and crying. And nightmares will pull the dreamers down with their negative nightmares. If you dream a dreamer hanging around nightmares, be prepared to start thinking small. Joseph was around small-minded people. They couldn't get past their small-mindedness, and that's why they sought to kill Joseph because they were nightmares while Joseph was a dreamer. If, if you're a dreamer hanging around nightmares, 
I, I just want you to know that you better be prepared to fail. <laughs> if people around you don't want to have a vision and are stuck at complacency and stuck at potential, what they did in 2020 is the best that they will ever do, the best that they will ever become, and they can't dream big for 2021. Sometimes what you've got to do is move yourself from that environment. Because that, that attitude of just enough can be contagious. So many are stuck at potential. See, 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 I have the potential to take my 2009 Acura up to 160 miles per hour. But I've never reached its full potential because it gets stuck somewhere between none ya. <laughs> None of your business. <laughs> y'all don't need to know how fast I I'm driving. <laughs> I ain't telling y'all how fast I I'm driving so y'all can kill my dream of trying to get to 160. <laughs> but, 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 but in all seriousness, I'm saying that my car has potential to hit high speeds, but it hasn't reached its potential. It's been stuck somewhere between 70, 75, 80, uh, and I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> but it has not reached its potential, and a lot of people have potential, but they get stuck at potential because they cannot have a dream for themselves. And what I'm saying is, if people don't want to go anywhere, then you've got to go where people are trying to move. You, you cannot surround yourself with blindness and expect to see. You, you cannot ex uh, surround yourself with paralyzed people, people that have no dreams for themselves, people that are going nowhere in life, they're stuck right where they are. They're stuck in failure, stuck in bitterness, stuck in anger, stuck in hatred, stuck in brokenness, stuck in self-pity, and think that you ain't going to get stuck as well. If that's all you're hanging around with daily, then you're probably paralyzed yourself because you're comfortable with hanging around with paralyzed people. And I'm saying at some point in time, you got to move around. Yeah, yeah, amen. Let me say it again. At some point in time, you got to move around. If people don't have a vision, a dream for themselves, and you're hanging around a bunch of people that aren't trying to go anywhere, what's going to happen is they're going to rub off on you, and before you know it, you're going to find yourself in the same place that they're in, just stuck. If, if 2020 was the best that we can do as a church, then shame on us, and it's time to move around. But, but praise be the mighty name of Jesus. This leadership here at Missouri City believes that we can go further in 2020 than 21 than we did in 2020. And I'm just going to say, not only do we believe it, we will. We, we've got to dream big for this church. And I'm just crazy enough to believe that we will achieve our dreams in 2021 for Missouri City Church of Christ. Whatever it is that we want, God is saying that we can walk on water if we want. But, but you got to dream big enough to be able to walk on water. Hallelujah. And all I'm saying is Joseph had a dream, but he ran into a bunch of nightmares. And so in this lesson, we've pointed out in the past that when you tell your dreams to others, these are some of the points that we've given you. Be prepared 
for enemies. Also, understand that everybody can't handle your dreams, but you've got to trust the process and trust God. We, we, we've talked about don't be a giraffe listening to turtle talk. We've talked about knowing that while trying to reach your dreams, you will face some prisons. But know that your prisons are providential. And when you face your prisons, we told you to keep on dreaming even in the prison. And then we told you don't give up on the dream, but realize the dream. And so we've covered quite a bit of territory in this series of lessons. And last time we ended talking about how Joseph was locked up in prison for being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife of raping her when Potiphar left home simply because he refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife. So Joseph gets locked up. But while in prison, Joseph ran into two men, a butler and a baker, these two who worked for Pharaoh. These two were two of the most trusted men in Pharaoh's kingdom, and they're locked up in the same prison as Joseph. And one day, we talked about it last time, it just so happened that both the butler and the baker had a dream in the same night, both with his own interpretation, and they were both sad because they could not figure out or understand their dreams. And so Joseph saw their face. He saw that they were walking around sad and looking bitter. And Joseph asked them, he said, why are you so sad? And they said to Joseph, because we've each had a dream, but there's no one to interpret our dreams. And Joseph knew that he had the ability to interpret dreams. And so he asked them to tell him their dreams. And they both began to tell their dreams. And as they told the dreams, Joseph interpreted both dreams. And Joseph told the chief butler in chapter 40, verse number 14, that since I've told you your dream, please do not forget me. Please remember to make mention of me to Pharaoh so that I can get up out of this prison. The Bible says in verse 23 of chapter 40 that he yet the chief butler forgot about Joseph once he got out of prison. But it just so happened, and I'm trying to give you this so you can see where we are this morning. In chapter 41, that Pharaoh himself had a dream. And what was happening was that God was setting Joseph up for his blessing. Because Pharaoh had this dream. And much like the baker and the butler in verse number 8, Pharaoh had no one that was able to interpret his dream. And Pharaoh called in the magicians in all of Egypt. And he called in all of the wise men there in Egypt. But yet none of them were able to interpret the dream because they weren't the chosen one of God. And let me tell you this, you, you can't do what God has not chosen you to do. <laughs> let, let me say that again. You, you cannot do what God has not chosen you to do. <laughs> you may try and do what God has not chosen you to do, but unless God chooses you, it's impossible to do what God has not chosen you to do. The magician and the wise men tried to interpret the dream of Pharaoh, but because they were not chosen to interpret it, they could not interpret it. Joseph 
was the chosen one. And so Pharaoh is stressed because he's had this dream, but he can't interpret it. And suddenly that butler that forgot about Joseph, he now remembers Joseph. And he tells Pharaoh that there was this young Hebrew man that was responsible for telling both me and the baker the interpretation of our dreams. And that word right there from the butler to Pharaoh placed Joseph in the king's palace. Joseph has now moved from the prison into the palace, interpreting dreams for the king. And the dream that Pharaoh had was a dream of the conditions of the land. Joseph said, Pharaoh... Here's what God was trying to reveal to you in your dream that you had last night. And that is that there will be seven years of great plenty. And that will continue throughout all of the land of Egypt for seven years. What a blessing. But the Joseph, a Pharaoh, God was also revealing that after those seven plentiful years there will be seven years of famine that will arise there will be no food the land will be de depleted and the only way that people will be able to eat is that someone must store up some food so that when the famine comes there will be plenty of food for us to eat Joseph was divinely chosen to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And because of Joseph fulfilling his divine assignment by God, by interpreting Pharaoh's dream, God gets to working on Joseph's behalf. Because what happens is that in verse 37 to verse number 57, there was now a famine in the land. But there was grain in Egypt. There was bread in Egypt. There was food in Egypt because while the land was plentiful for those seven years, Joseph gathered up, stored up food for this day that would come, that a famine would come and invade the land. And Pharaoh told Joseph, because of you, Interpreting my dream, you shall be over my house. All of my people shall be ruled according to your word, Joseph. And Joseph, only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Joseph, when the famine comes, all of the Egyptians are to come to you. And whatever you say is what happens. And so the Bible says in chapter 42 that everyone that is a part of this famine now have come to Egypt to get food. But the only way to get the food is through Joseph. And here's where we are this morning. <laughs> The only way to get the food is through Joseph because Potiphar, the king, set it up their way. But I want you to know Potiphar really didn't set it up their way. God set it up their way. God said, Joseph, don't you worry. I know it seems like all hell is broken loose in your life. I know it looks like life is falling apart for you, but I want you to know that I've got you on a divine assignment. And I want somebody to know this morning that when God puts you on assignment you better fulfill your assignment he, he says look the whole land is in a famine and the only way people will eat is they got to see you first this was all God working this thing out because guess who's a part of that number that's in the famine? Guess who have come to Joseph to get some food? Joseph's brothers. 
Hallelujah. And do you remember what Joseph's dream was? Joseph's dream was in chapter 37, verse number 7. He says to his brothers, I had a dream. And in my dream, there were binding sheaves in the field. My sheep arose, and your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. In other words, Joseph said, one day, all of you brothers of mine are going to bow down to me as your leader. Now watch the dream become reality. Because look at chapter 42, verse number 1. The Bible says, when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, everywhere else it was a famine. There's grain in Egypt. Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? Why y'all just standing here? He said, indeed, I have heard that there's grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, lest some calamity befall him. We talked about that last time why he didn't send Benjamin. He says, and the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land. And it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And watch this. Now, chapter 37, verse number 7. Joseph said, there were binding sheaves in the field. My sheaf arose. Your sheaf stood all around and bowed down to me. Y'all see that? Verse number six. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him. Just as Joseph said what happened. With their faces to the earth, Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them, spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, where did you come from? They said from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize Joseph. Y'all see that church? Joseph now stands face to face with his brothers. His brothers don't know that it's Joseph, but Joseph knows that it's his brothers. Can you imagine church standing face to face with the very people that tried to kill you? Can you imagine standing face to face with the very people that sold you, that laughed at you, that listened to you cry, but had no care or remorse for you? Can you imagine standing face to face with the same people that didn't believe in your dreams? Can you imagine standing face to face with the same ones that didn't care to even hear about your dreams, that always spoke negatively about or against your dreams. And now those same dream killers are in need of the dreamer to help them to live so that their dreams could be fulfilled. That would be tough. How many of us would be willing to feed our enemies, the ones that tried to kill us. <laughs> you, you know they tried to kill you. They sold you. They, they laughed at you when they threw you in a pit and ate, ate a meal over you while you were in the hole. And now those same folk that didn't believe in you have come to you and asked you for help. How many of us will be able to feed our enemies? <laughs> 
<laughs> see, 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 that's when this Christianity thing gets real because the Bible says, and this ain't in my notes, but the Bible teaches us that in Matthew chapter 5, <laughs> verses 38 on down, that you ought to love your enemies. <laughs> Do good to those that hate you. <laughs> if they ask you for, uh, if, if they tell you to go one mile, go with them two miles. In other words, go the extra mile. That's what God is saying. God is saying, hate, the, love the folk that are hard to love. <laughs> And here, here, these boys are standing in Joseph's face and saying, hey, master, governor, we're hungry. We need a meal. The same ones that tried to kill you are the same ones that need you to feed them. <laughs> See, that would be tough. I, I ain't going to lie to you. That, that ain't going to be easy. But that was Joseph's situation. The very people that tried to kill him and made mockery of him are the very ones that are in need of his grace. And I need to drop a nugget here. I need to drop a word here to the church. And that word is, be careful how you treat people. Because <laughs> you never know when those very folk that you mistreated will be the very ones that you need to deliver you later on in life. <laughs> God has a strange way of doing things. Uh, he can take nobodies and make them somebodies and he can take the somebodies and suddenly they become nobodies. Don't mess with God's very own. As Genesis chapter 50 said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. God can turn that situation around. Be careful how you treat folk. I need to say a word to us as a people. There must come a point in time that we learn how to stop hating on one another and start speaking life into each other. Let me say that again because somebody needs that again. <laughs> there must come a point in time that we as a people learn how to stop hating on one another and learn how to speak life into each other. And if you don't know how to speak life into a person, then learn how to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I know, I know that that ain't right, but I need to say that again too. If you don't know how to speak life into a person, then learn how to keep your mouth shut. Don't say nothing at all. There must come a point that we as a people learn how to speak life into others' dreams. Even if it ain't your dream. Even when you don't understand the dream and understand the calling, as one preacher put it, others understand your calling. That's okay. It wasn't a conference call. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me say it again. Others may not understand your calling, but that's okay. <laughs> It wasn't a conference call. In other words, the call wasn't for everybody. It was for you. And whatever God has for them may not be for you. And you may not understand it, but you can still speak life to it. And if you can't speak life to it, you can still learn how to keep it on the hush. Don't say nothing. Ain't no need for talking. My thing. Keep it on the hush. Don't act like y'all don't know Ludacris. Ludacris said, keep it on the hush. Don't say nothing. Ain't no need for talking while I'm doing my thing. All I'm saying is, if you don't have life to speak, then be quiet. We must learn to help others realize their dreams and stop criticizing all the time. Because you never know when you'll need those very same people that you've always criticized. We as a people, I just got to speak this morning to help us. 
must get out of that crab mentality. That mentality that says, I cannot stand to see you make it to the top before me. So as I see you climbing and getting closer to the top, I'm going to pull you back down because I'm down. And, and, and nobody can be above and before and ahead of me. And we need to learn to get out of that crab mentality. Some people are just toxic. They're, they're negative. And as you're growing and trying to realize your dreams and make it to the top, some of those same friends, Christians, that were tight with you when you were just barely surviving, are gone now when you've made it somewhere in life because some people prefer your dreams to just stay dreams. But when you start growing, their reaction is you think you're all that now. Let, let me pull you down. That, that's got to change. And, and especially uh, amongst us as African Americans. Because it seems like everyone else knows how to push their own. But, but we always tear down our own. That, 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 that's got to change. Joseph's own brothers, his very own, were the very ones that pulled him down instead of elevating him. And my question is, when will we learn how to support one another? How to push one another? How to encourage one another? If, if, if I see you almost at the top, I need to help push you up to the top and believe that mine is coming as well. And while I'm working my way to the top, Help push me to the top as well. And, and, and when we do, we need to do it without allowing bitterness, hatred, hating, jealousy, envy, spite to resonate in our hearts. Joseph's brothers allowed uh, envy and hatred and bitterness and spite and jealousy to resonate in their hearts when he told them his dream. Back then they didn't want him. Now he's hot. They're all on Joseph. But they don't even know that it's Joseph because watch the text. Chapter 42, verses 10 on down. I want y'all to see this, and we're almost finished. They said to Joseph, when Joseph told them that they are spies, and you've come to see the nakedness of the land, they said to Joseph, No, my Lord, but your servants had come to buy food. See, they didn't want him back then. Now he's the man. They're all over him and bowing down, worshiping Joseph. They say, we are all one man's son. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. I want you to see Joseph's story. But he said to them, no, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. I know why y'all are here. And they said, your servants are our 12 brothers. The sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, our youngest brother Benjamin is with our father today. And there's another one that is no more. His name is Joseph. They don't even realize that they're talking to Joseph. They don't know that Joseph is still alive. They're telling Joseph that, Joseph, you're dead. But Joseph said to them, it is as I spoke to you saying, y'all are spies. I know why y'all are here. In this manner, you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not leave this place. He said, y'all ain't going home. Y'all thought y'all were going to leave. He said, I want y'all to know, you will not leave this place unless your younger brother Benjamin comes here. 
Send one of you and let him bring your brother and you shall be kept in prison that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And Joseph locked his brothers up in prison for three days. <laughs> Joseph said, y'all about to feel what I felt. Three days, y'all going to be in this prison. And I want Benjamin to be here in the next few days. And Joseph said to them the third day, do this and live for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house. But you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses. Bring your youngest brother to me so your words will be verified and you shall not die. And they did so. And then they said to one another, this is happening because we are guilty concerning our brother Joseph. We saw the anguish of his soul. We, we heard him pleading with us and we would not listen to him. Therefore, what we're suffering has come on us because of us. And Reuben answered and said to them, I, I tried to tell y'all. I, I, I spoke to y'all. I, I told y'all to leave him alone. <laughs> But y'all would not listen. Y'all sinned against him. And therefore, his blood is now on our hands. But they did not know that Joseph understood them. For he spoke through an interpreter. Can y'all imagine Joseph sitting there listening to his brothers arguing back and forth? About what they did to him. And it hurt Joseph so much. Then in verse 24, the Bible says that he turned away from them and he began to weep. He cried because it's like he remembered all of those things that happened some 20 years ago all over again. The Bible says, and then he returned to them again and talked with them and he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain. To restore every man, man's money to his sack. And to give them provisions for the journey. Now we get to see the power of forgiveness. He says, I tell you what. I know what my brothers did. But here's what I want you to do. Fill all of my brothers' sack with grain. And not only that. Don't even make them pay for it. Give them their money back. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and departed from there. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money and there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, my money has been restored and there it is in my sack. And their hearts failed them and they were afraid saying to one another, what is this that God has done to us? And they went to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan and told Jacob all that had happened to them. I'm going to just read the rest of 40, 42 and then we'll be done with our reading. They told their daddy all that had happened to them. The man who is Lord of the land spoke roughly to us. Daddy, he took us for spies of the country. We told him men we are not spies we are 12 brothers we are sons of our father one is no more the youngest is with our father in Canaan then the man the lord of the country said to us by this I will know that you are honest men leave one of your brothers take it here with me take food for the famine of your households be gone and bring your youngest brother back to me so I shall know that you are not spies, but you are honest men. And I will grant your brother to you, and they will make trade in the land. And then all of them opened up their sacks. I'll just paraphrase. They all opened up their sacks. When they opened up their sacks, they saw food in the sack, and they all saw money in the sacks, and they all got scared because they thought that if they go back, 
back to try and get their brother back that Joseph would accuse them of stealing the money and all of them would get locked up and Benjamin would never return back home to his daddy and they say what shall we do if we go back with this money we're going to be accused of being thieves So they said, Daddy, but the only way that we can get food and the only way that Simeon can be released from prison is that we got to go back. We, we got to go back with Benjamin and we got to go back with this money. Jacob said, y'all ain't taking my boy. This is the only son that I have left of Rachel. Y'all already let one boy die. You will not take another one. Jacob couldn't even think right. Jacob didn't realize that if they did not go back, that all of them would starve to death. Finally, they were able to open his eyes. One of the boys said, Reuben said, look, daddy, look, I tell you what, I have two sons. If, 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 if we don't come back with Benjamin, I tell you what, I'll allow them to kill both of my sons. This is how desperate we are, Daddy. I'm allowing my two boys to be sacrificed, but we've got to take Benjamin so that we can get some food and so that we can get Simeon out of the prison. And so Jacob finally allowed them to go with Benjamin. He says, if he dies, he just dies. That, that just, I'll be heartbroken, but that's just how it's going to be. And then chapter 42, verses 10 through 38, goes into the story of how Joseph's dream starts becoming reality. Joseph's dream becomes his reality. His brothers are bowing to him. The same folk that sought to destroy him have now bowed to him. They're at this dreamer's mercy. He's their leader. He's their governor. And they're in the face of Joseph. And Joseph remembers. And here's my invitation. Because I think this is a word for somebody. Joseph remembers when his brothers show up to him in Egypt. What they did to him. He remembers how they mistreated him. He remembers how they tried to kill him. He remembers how they laughed at him in his dreams. He remembers how they made mockery of him. But yet, the Bible says that just to see their faces again brought Joseph to tears. Because at the end of the day, these are my brothers. And though they hurt me, it gives me so much joy just to see my brother's faces again. Y'all need to see this church. At the end of the day, though Joseph's been through so much pain, though Joseph's been through so much hurt, disappointments, letdowns, betrayal, Joseph's resolve and purpose was never to get even. His purpose wasn't to rub in his brother's faces that, ha, 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 I did it. I told y'all. I told y'all that my dreams would come true and my dream came true. Look who's bearing to me now. Look who's in control now. No, that wasn't his purpose. He's just happy to see his brothers again. It's my dream. Joseph said, anybody. It was just simply my dream. I know y'all thought I was trying to rub my dream in your faces 20 years ago. Now, I just wanted somebody to hear my dream. And I thought that telling my brothers was a safe place. But I'm not here to rub in y'all's faces that I told you so. I'm just glad and overjoyed to see your faces again. 
That's, that's a word, church. And, and I pray somebody hears this word and receives this word and lets this word speak to your spirit this morning. And that is, don't ever use your dreams as a rub in my haters face tool. Whatever you accomplish in life this year, use it as a to God be the glory weapon. Oftentimes, we want to complete things in our lives to get even, to rub it in our enemies' faces, to show the haters that I made it, I, I did it. But whatever you achieve, don't let that be the base uh, to get even with your enemies. Let it be for the glory of God. God, I did this because of you. God, I'm where I am because of you. If it had not been for you, God, on my side, where would I be? Yes, God, you may have used my haters to be my motivators, but God, what I've accomplished is for your glory. God, I praise your name. God, my hallelujah belongs to you, and all of the praises belong to you. You deserve it for what you've done in my life. I'm not going to use my blessings as the devil's tools. That's one thing that I love about Joseph Church. And that is everything that Joseph ever accomplished in life. He never failed to see God. And even when his enemies, his own family sought to hurt him. Yes, Joseph cried. Yes, he hurt, but yet he still saw God. And even though his own family sought to kill him, yes, he cried. Yes, he hurt, but he still loved them. And he chose forgiveness over retaliation. And that's where I'm stopping. That's a good word for next time. He chose forgiveness over retaliation. Oh, there's a word in there, church. And the next time I pray that you connect with us so that you can hear that word. Joseph tried to reach his dreams. His brothers tried to stop his dreams and hated on his dreams. But yet Joseph chose forgiveness over retaliation. And what I'm saying to you this morning is... Whatever you accomplish in 2021, don't let it be to rub in everybody's face what I've done. Let it be for the glory of God. God, I'm only where I am because of you. That, that, that's how Joseph saw this thing. Joseph said, man, look, I know I can rub in my brother's face that if I don't give y'all food, y'all going to die. I'm your governor. It bow down to me. You want some food? Bow down. No, he could have done that. But Joseph said, no, this is for the glory of God. Y'all meant this for evil. But God meant this for my good. Whatever happens to you this year, let it all be for God's glory. Don't you put the shine on you. Don't you put the light on you. <clears throat> yeah, I went to school because I'm so educated and have so many degrees. I know God did it. And that's what Joseph came to realize. God did this thing. That's my lesson to you this morning. My, my lesson to you is see God in everything, in every dream that you realize this year. Make sure you see God in it. And, and make sure you're not achieving your dreams for the wrong purpose. But do it for the purpose of God's glory. And God will continue to bless you to prosper. You've heard the word of God this morning. Believe this message. Be willing to change your ways, which is repentance. Confess Jesus Christ to be the son of God. Be willing to go down to the watery grave of baptism for the remission of your sins.
God in heaven will add you to his church, the body of Christ. Live faithful to death. One day he'll give you a crown of righteousness. Let us sing the Savior's invitation. Cares for you. Cares for you. I know the Lord. church say amen. amen. I want to be a very, very appreciative of Brother Michael uh, in closing out his series on Joseph, and I'm not sure if it's closed or not, but uh, he did an excellent job. Now, I say it may not be closed because he touched on something about humility, and uh, God loves the humble person, and Joseph did not try to show pride when he had an opportunity to and uh, talk bad about his brothers and treat them bad. Uh, he cried and weeped. And so Brother Mike may come back and that's a good message for us as Christians uh, to be humble and uh, let God use us. Uh, I'm here to give the uh, prayer requests, uh, but before we do that and give the names, uh, we want to uh, put your attention to the screen and we're going to uh, look at the names of those that have been asking for prayers. Amen. Uh, we want to remember all of those that are on our prayer list, and they're on our prayer list uh, sometimes week in, week out, so we want to keep those uh, of our brothers and sisters in prayer. I'll begin with the first name that's asking for prayer request, uh, and that's Sister Sunshine Gary. She's asking for prayers for her family on the loss of her aunt, Matt Lou Jakes. And also, Tisha, Sister Tish Miller is asking for prayers for the Miller family. Uh, she says, we love and miss you guys. It's good to hear from the Millers. And then Sister Stacy Tanner asking for prayers for her parents, Willie and Catherine Walker's health. Also for her family for health and finances. Uh, Brother Zeno is asking prayers for his health for sight and recovery and pain relief. And then lastly, Sister Wanda Sasu asking prayers for strength and for the Sasu family. Uh, church, let us go to God in prayer. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for allowing us an opportunity to hear another portion of your word and Father, we are so grateful for 
the message that was given this morning. Father, we want to ask that you be with those that are on our prayer list, uh, various reasons they're there. Uh, Father, you know every single reason why they're there. And so we just ask, Father, that you would uh, grant those things of their desire. And so, Father, we pray that you would be with Sister Sunshine Gary as she has uh, lost an aunt. And so, Father, we pray that you would comfort her in a special way and allow her to be a comforter to those that may need it. And, Father, for the Millers, we miss them. We love them as well. And so, Father, we're asking prayers on behalf of the Miller family. Father, we're asking prayers for Sister Tanner, who is asking for prayers for her parents. And so, Father, we pray for her parents, Catherine, uh, Willie and Catherine Walker. And we pray for their health, Father. Uh, we know our health is so important to us. And sometimes, Father, we take it for granted that we can even just get out of bed. So, Father, we just pray that you would be with their finances uh, as well. And then for our brother, Brother Zeno, Father, we pray for Brother Zeno. We know that he has been dealing with some health situations uh, with his leg and, and also with his sight, Father. And we just pray you would just continue to be with our brother, help him, Father, and, and heal his body if it's your will. And so, Father, we pray for Sister Wanda Sasu, who's asking prayers for strength and asking prayers for the Sasu family. And, Father, we want to be in prayer for uh, the Ardwans. They were in an accident on yesterday. And, uh, Father, we are so glad that they're here today. Uh, and, Father, we are just so grateful that uh, it wasn't worse than it could have been. And so we just ask that you will continue to be with them and bless them, Father. And, Father, for this congregation as a whole and those that are out there in Facebook land, our members who can't be here with us at this time, Father, we just pray that you will continue to be with us. And, Father, we just cannot wait until the time we can come back together as one, fellowship in one with another. And, Father, we have uh, apparently have taken it for granted that we could see each other Sunday in and Sunday out. But, Father, we just thank you so much and we pray that they're still recovering from the, 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 the ice and the storm that have come. And we pray that you would just be with our members and be with those abroad in the churches of Christ. We ask these all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen to those who are here in person and to those in Facebook land. Uh, if you were blessed by today, say amen. amen. And if you've been blessed by this entire series of lessons, say amen. amen. We are eternally grateful to Brother Williams just for the way that he has uh, been bringing God's word to life. Amen. And uh, through this series and particularly today, uh, not going to repeat the whole thing that he said, but I want to give you two nuggets that uh, stuck with me. One of them is, uh, if others don't understand your calling, don't worry about it, because you didn't receive it on a conference call. <laughs> amen, amen to that one. Yeah. Amen. And uh, he ended up, I uh, like this one as well, choose forgiveness over retaliation. Yeah. So we, to bring glory to God, we've got to keep those things in mind. So appreciate those lessons, Brother Mike. Uh, so we'll uh, visit the uh, announcement that we have today. And then we'll prepare for our closing song and prayer. Uh, we want to remind everyone to join us for our Zoom classes. The marriage class is uh, Mondays at 7 o'clock. Kids for Christ, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And Tech Talk with Brother Bolden, they're Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. And uh, Brother Bolden wants everyone to know that the subject for this Thursday is going to be setting up a smart home. And so I know Brother Bowden can definitely help with that. So if you see Brother Bowden, you'll see that he can turn on lights by speaking to his uh, smart home. He can turn lights on and off. So if you want some assistance with that, join him for his Tech Talk. That's Thursday at 630. And also, if you have any questions or topics you want to address for the uh, Tech Talk, uh, give them to Sister Crystal, and she will uh, get those to Brother Bowden 
if there's something in particular you would want covered. And also, uh, you can find those links on the website uh, if you want to, we encourage you to join those. And uh, finally, we want to remind everyone that Thursdays at 8 o'clock, we do have our prayer call. So that's Thursday at 8 p.m. So that concludes our announcements, and we'll have our closing song and prayer at this time. I still have joy, you know I still have joy. Oh, after all the things I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy. You know I still have joy. I still have He's joy. been so good, he's been so good. My God, he's been so good. Oh yeah, after all the things I've been through, he's been so good. Can't help but smile, can't help but smile. I can't, can't help but smile. Oh, but after all the things I've been through, I can't help but Father, we come just so thankful for the, the things we've heard, what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard today. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the message. And Father, we thank you that you've given us another day. And Father, we pray that we take this message and apply it to our lives so that we can be better today than we've been in the past. And Father, we pray that you help us to be dreamers. And we just pray that we can use our full potential as we dream. And Father, help us to never take advantage of those things that you've given us. And we be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the time when the true worshiper of God worship the Father and His Spirit and in the truth. I like it when I step through the door. Something different in the God knows I need to take it all in stride and keep my focus on the gold. Yes, I barely made it to the church house in time. Yes, there's the only help I know.
ones that go to me, yeah, yeah. I call them devils I've been dealing with this week. I got to get on up in there. Like balloons. 